if you're having trouble seeing me, my guest, Dr. Uh, Rahiji Khanna, will help you get rid of those glasses, and not only get rid of the glasses, because even if you have, I guess, contacts, like I wear, I, I wear contact lenses, so, but I only wear one, because that way I can see um, far away with one, and I can read and have, you know, close vision with the other. And a lot of people do that, because when you put contact lenses on, oftentimes, or you have um, surgery in your eyes, oftentimes you then have to wear glasses to read. Well, Dr. Khanna, you, you know, do a procedure where that's no longer required, right? That's correct. With this procedure, you retain the binocularity in the eye, because when you do one eye far, one eye near, computers, laptop, and iPhones might become a problem, you know, smartphones and uh, driving or putting needle, uh, sorry, a thread in a needle might become a problem. Right. But with pi in eye, you retain the binocularity and see at all distances in each eye. And how is that different than, than other eye procedures? So the most popular procedure till now has been LASIK, which is a wonderful procedure for people under 45 years of age. Uh, it works in that age group because uh, people have strong muscles in their eye. And when the eyes are set for distance, they can accommodate to see middle and near. So if you're under 45 and you get the Lasix, then you're, you're probably okay at that age yes. to not wear, supplement it with any kind of reading glass. Right. Okay. So but people above 45 or who had LASIK when they were in their 40s and now are touching 60s, mm -hmm. uh, they, uh, they don't want to go back to wearing readers or cheaters, whatever you call them. So they want freedom from that, which, you know, with the modern baby boomers being uh, climbing rocks, cycling, mobiking, they, they don't want to be dependent on that. So this procedure liberates them from dependency on contacts or glasses. Mm -hmm. And you call the procedure pi? Pi in the eye. Pi in the eye. And you actually wrote a book about this, uh, pi in the eye. And how is that procedure really different than Lasix? What do you do that's differently? I and mean, try to, you know, if you can explain it in sure. layman terms. You know, the uh, eye, yeah. the front part is the clear part, cornea. Mm -hmm. Lasix is done on that part. Oh, and, and Lasix is what just takes out the, the uh, trims the lens? Is that no, what Lasix right? doesn't touch the lens. Right. Lasix touches the clear part, the front part of the eye called the cornea, right. which is the first thing you see or actually don't see because you see the colored part. Right. So it's in front of the colored part of the eye. And in LASIK, you just modulate or photoablate that part or reshape it to make sure the light rays focus on the retina. Okay. Whereas in pi in eye, we go behind the iris, the colored part, open the bag where the lens f is been sitting, and you know, just like hair grows and we give it a trim, that lens fibers have become thicker with age. So we give them a, like a super cut Right. take them out yeah. and leave the bag intact and put an artificial biosynth uh, compatible synthetic lens inside which sits there for the rest of the life. See, when you t talk about putting an artificial lens inside the eye, that may scare some people. Well, what happens if it, you know, something happens to the lens and they, you know, it's kind of like, uh, like an artificial heart valve. I mean, right. they only last so many years. And that's why I decided to write the book because so much fear is about there about surgery. And for eye surgery, it's even more because anything comes near your eyes, by reflex mechanism, you close your eyes and move back. And that's why it's very important to understand the safety mechanism of it. So these uh, lenses we are using have been derived from the lenses originally used for cataract surgeries, where millions have been performed with a great mm -hmm. safe, safety record. And you know, people who passed away, their eyes were examined by a doctor, you know, a specialist in this and saw that it was pretty safe. And the latest generation of nano-engineered lenses are even safer and biocompatible. So they don't incite any allergic reaction or unlike the heart valve rejection. Because eye is not, uh, where it's sitting, there are no blood vessels there. That's how the body rejects something. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and what if somebody, you know, Particularly, uh, you know, elderly people, if they have uh, cataracts and, you know, they're not seeing too well because of that. And they also have, in addition to the cataract, may have, uh, you know, uh, uh, difficulty, you know, looking, reading or looking at a distance. Can you combine the two um, treatments? Yes, that gives the best of both worlds. 
So symptoms of cataract might be getting glare while driving at night or needing a lot of extra light to read or just having like a parchment or haziness in the vision, you know. Right. So at the time of cataract surgery, uh, it can be elevated to pi in eye type of surgery. The difference is cataract surgery has been performed for like more than 50 years in this country. And when you say cataract, it might be something which was done 30 years ago versus 10 years ago. So it has evolved and uh, pi in eye is of a higher caliber than that because there are no stitches involved, no injection, no pain. I repeat, no pain. That's very important, you know, <laughs> because and uh, quick recovery, no bandage. People can get up and go to work same day. I don't mm -hmm. encourage that, but a lot of people do then. So mobility and all return to work is much faster. If you've had um, a, a previous cataract surgery, are you still a candidate for the, the PI? Uh, you could still be a candidate, but the eye doctor would have to examine because not everybody would be a candidate. That's why it's imp important to do correctly the first time. So before do undergoing cataract surgery, it's better to discuss and learn about all your options than to do it and th think, I can do it five years later. Because it's safer to do it as a one-step thing. And what about uh, those people who have had uh, Lasix? And perhaps now they've, they were 40, 45 when they got it, but now they're 60, and now they're, they got the reading glasses. That's an yeah. ideal group, as I mentioned in a book. Mm -hmm. I've, in fact, devoted a whole chapter to that. Because the first few people who adopted this technology were the people who had LASIK. They had hated their glasses, got freedom, and again got entrapped or jailed. So extra calculations are required because not the same pie is put in everybody's eyes. So each has a different power. So we have to measure the length of the eye, the curvature of the eye, and put it in some special formula to generate results. And if people have had LASIK, we add some modifiers to them and uh, come out with great results. Yeah, what, this, what does this pi stand for? Is that 3.1417? <laughs> <laughs> no. Pi stands for presbyopic implant. Because, yeah. you know, all medical terms can be very confusing. The original yeah. term was prelex, which is a tongue twister when I say presbyopic refractive lens exchange. Whereas pi in eye is easy to remember, and it's factually correct. It's a presbyopic implant inside the eye. Got it. And, you know, oftentimes some people, and I don't know if it's true, today as it was, you know, 10, 15 years ago when uh, people would get Lasix. Um, after the procedure, they would see halos or different lights, you know, and, and it wouldn't, wouldn't work 100% clear, clear for everybody. Is, is that a side effect that still exists? With LASIK, <coughs> yeah. we have uh, progressed a great deal with modern technology like Wavefront, LASIK, and Flying Spot. We've been able to do away with that. The reason it used to occur, because in the broad beam lasers, those were the first generation, we got like a cylinder. So there was a sharp edge, so where the glare came from, treated and non-treated. And that's why there was a lot of regression, like numbers would come back slightly. But with the modern one, there is no sharp edge, and the normal shape of the eyes, which is prolate, is maintained. So because of that smooth curvature, you don't get that glare and halos at mm -hmm. night. So you end up with nearly perfect vision? Yes, I did it on my son one and a <laughs> half years ago, laser, mm -hmm. and he, he can see things way beyond better than he could see before with his contact mm -hmm. lenses. So who would be the ideal candidate for, for a PI procedure? For a PI procedure, ideal candidate would be somebody above 45, right. ideally around 55, who uh, the, uh, feels the glasses restrict his or her daily activities. Nearsighted or farsighted, either one? That's the beauty of it. It treats everything, nearsightedness, farsightedness, astigmatism, astigmatism and presbyopia. And so it's one solution for everything if done accurately and pro properly. So it has a higher bar than LASIK, because in LASIK you just want 20-20 for distance, and that was the goal. But now we are delivering 20-20 for distance, 20-20 for reading, and 2020 for middle. So everything has to be very precisely done. And there are more than one choice of presbyopic Im implants. So what I tell in the book is based on patients or consumers' lifestyle. It's very important the surgeon uses his experience to match the ideal lens mm -hmm. or implant to that. And that's based upon an examination of the eye, determining what type of uh, implant you'll use? It starts with a questionnaire or mm -hmm. uh, understanding the lifestyle. Like suppose somebody's a movie star versus somebody's a swimmer. Or somebody, you know, what they do, uh, a skier, 
are they busy or a librarian you know based on their lifestyle do they drive a lot at night so mm -hmm. what's their needs so ideal way to do is we write down their goals and see where they would be willing to make some compromises and where it's very important um, that they don't they won't want to like one of the things you mentioned was about glare or halos right. that can help us uh, choose one lens versus the other and same way if somebody that wants to be able to do close work like a jeweler versus somebody who reads at an arm's length mm -hmm. so it's almost like uh, custom making a suit you have different measurements and goals and then you design we can even mix and match in the two eyes have one kind of implant in one another pie in oh. the other eye and they have to gel together so you have to understand the patient's psychology their needs their work lifestyle the age so it's a more mm. uh, intensive process than LASIK where you just saw that number and that's all you treat does insurance cover this kind of procedure that's a wonderful question and it yeah. does if you have cataracts which are affecting your activities of daily living uh -huh. so if, if uh, it can be shown by a questionnaire we give a questionnaire to the patient which right. is from the Medicare that uh, if the driving at night is affected or work uh -huh. is getting affected from the cataract then insurance covers. And Medicare would be covered and enlist insurance and companies private as pay well. insurance yeah. is covered too. Yeah, and, uh, and if it's, it's not covered, you know, I hate to talk about money, but, you know, how much is this then equivalent to LASIK? Or it's a little more it? expensive than LASIK because, you know, LASIK is done in a clean suite in the office. And because, remember, here I said we go behind the colored part into the lens, so we are actually inside the eye. So it is done in a sterile environment to prevent infections. So okay. that's the extra cost of the surgery mm -hmm. center. You know, oftentimes people, especially elderly people, see these... Uh, you know, black spots in their eyes that move, or crystals, is that what they're called? I don't know what they're... Floaters. You know, floaters, that's what they're, uh, floaters. Yeah, does this procedure correct that as well? There are two or three reasons for floaters. Uh -huh. You know, in Nevada, in California, it's so dry. One, a lot of people have, nearly most people have dry eyes. And uh, so one of the symptoms of dry eyes is this floaters, because uh -huh. every time you blink, and before the next blink, the tears break up, and that's what you see as a floater. Uh, so that does get mm -hmm. improved because at the same time of doing pie and eye, we do treat uh, dry eyes. It's important, you know. Just like you polish a glass to see better, you would need to have your cornea and all polished with good lubricant eye drops and other methods of treatment for dry eye. Mm -hmm. And second cause of floater is behind the lens, uh, which is from age-related vitreous uh, uh, turning from jello to liquid. And one of the things we do as a fine-tuning mechanism after doing pi is make a hole in the back membrane, which can help us clear the floaters. Well, you just like, cure everything at once. <laughs> <laughs> That's really great. Now, the uh, name of the book is Pi in the Eye, and it's not the pie we learn in geometry. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little different. Yeah. And, uh, and, and Dr. Akana, you're in, uh, you're in Beverly Hills. That's right. right? So I, mean, I, su I suspect, like most Beverly Hill doctors, you're treating famous actors and actresses right. and stars, but you also treat, uh, you know, elderly, for me, real any people patient on, on who Medicare, walk, yeah. right? For me, any yeah. patient who walks through the door is a star. Uh, you're, hey, you're very politically correct. So if you're interested in the book, you, and the book is available uh, where on, on? It's uh, on available on Amazon.com. Mm -hmm. uh, it's available as an audio book on iTunes. And it's also available on the website pieni.com. Right. So if you have really bad cataracts, you can just have the book read to you on iTunes. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. We'll be right back.